Hi everybody, my name is Dan. It's nice to meet you. Have you ever moved or had a friend move away? Or maybe there are people that you haven't seen in a while that you miss seeing. That can be tough when we want to be near the people that we love. Did you know that God likes to be near his people too? He liked to be with Adam and Eve and walk with them in the garden. And then he made a special tent in the desert so that he could be near his people. God was near when Jesus came to earth. And, and one really special way that God is near is that he sent his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us when we join God's family by believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Whenever we pray, God hears us. What is God like? God is near. Say that with me. What is God like? God is near. In today's Bible story, Jesus' friends were glad that he was near. Jesus did a miracle. Now, a miracle is something that God can do that would normally be impossible. We will be hearing about Jesus' miracles on earth for the next few weeks. Remember, the Bible is a, it's a book of little stories that tell one big story. Today's story is called, Jesus Calmed the Storm. Let's listen together about this miracle. Jesus spent all day teaching crowds of people near the Sea of Galilee. That evening, Jesus wanted to cross over to the other side of the sea. So Jesus and his disciples left the crowds. They got into a boat and began sailing. Some of the people from the crowds followed in their own boats. While Jesus and his disciples traveled, Jesus fell asleep on a cushion at the back of the boat. All of a sudden, a storm came. The wind was strong and the waves crashed into the boat. Water was coming into the boat and the disciples were afraid. Many of the disciples were fishermen. They had survived storms on the sea before, but this storm was different. It was so strong. If the water kept coming in the boat, the boat would sink. Surely they would all drown. The disciples looked to Jesus for help, but Jesus was still fast asleep at the back of the boat. He didn't seem to even notice the storm. Did Jesus care if they were about to sink into the sea? The disciples woke up Jesus. Lord, save us, they said. We are going to die. Jesus opened his eyes and saw that his friends were afraid. He got up and spoke to the wind. Then Jesus said to the sea, Silence! Be still. At the sound of Jesus' voice, the wind stopped blowing and the waves stopped crashing. Everything was calm. The disciples were safe. Jesus looked at his disciples and asked, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Did the disciples not trust Jesus to take care of them? The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. I don't know about you, but I've often wished I could control the weather. For starters, I'd never have to shovel my driveway again. But no matter how many times I sing songs asking for the rain or the snow to go away, or for the sun to come out, I have no control over the weather. <clears throat> this story helps us to see that Jesus isn't like us. He doesn't wish he could control the weather. He really does it. At his command, the wind stopped and the waves were calmed. Only God is able to make all of creation do as he says. After Jesus ended the storm, his disciples were safe from drowning, and they began to understand who Jesus is. Jesus calmed a storm to show the disciples that he is God. Can you remember a time when you got caught in a really strong storm? I can. In fact, it was such a strong storm that I still remember it like it was yesterday, even though it happened way back when I was in kindergarten. It was the day that our kindergarten class was supposed to go to the museum to see the dinosaurs. I was a very excited boy. Well, that morning, a big storm blew across the state of Michigan, and the wind blew so hard that the rain actually fell sideways. As I stood and looked out the back door, I saw that the wind 
actually picked up the deck of our above ground pool and it flipped it over into the pool itself. When that happened, I remember screaming out loud and running into the basement. I was so scared and I didn't want to come up until my parents promised me that the storm was over and we were safe. It was such a good feeling to come upstairs and see that everyone was safe and that our house didn't blow away. Unfortunately, the storm caused my school to cancel the trip to the museum, so no dinosaurs. I'm still a little sad about that, but I'm thankful that, that we were safe in the middle of that really, really bad storm. You know, we often feel we have a lot of control over our lives. As you grow up, it might be tempting to feel more and more in control. Many people think they control their lives if they just have enough money or the right friends or, or are in a position of authority but we really have very little control over our lives. The Bible teaches that God is in control of all things. He is good and loving and just, and that we can trust that everything he does is for his glory and for our good. So as we learn about Jesus's miracles, we wanna share a new verse with you. It's found in Psalm 40, verse five. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you. This psalm is a wonderful reminder that, that God is good, that all he does is good, that all of his plans are good. We can trust him through every trial and all of the hard times that we face. Pray with me. Lord, we know that you're in control of all things. Help us to trust in you more. And, and God, fill us with your spirit so that we can love you more and obey you more each and every day. We love you, God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.